Hey everyone, welcome back. And in the last video, just like we set up our Webpack dev server, what you might have seen is a couple of things if you observed. First of all, you could see that the Webpack dev server, once we run this command, it does not really exit. Right, so it's waiting for you to make some changes, then it's going to compile those changes. For example, if I make some changes, hit save, we're gonna see, we get a nice little compiling message here. It's cre it creates a new hash for that chunk. And basically it compiles it again for you to test it out on the Webpack dev server. Another thing is that although we are using this output where we are resolving from path, we have this main.js, we have this public path setup, we do not really see any build directory here. Whereas we are able to access this particular file right here, not really this one, but if I go ahead and write assets and you know, main.js, you see, not really this one, assets.js, main.js, we're gonna see, we get the complete file, but where is this file actually present here? The thing with Webpack Dev Server is that it keeps whatever it's generating in the memory, in the RAM, right? So it does not write it to the disk. Why is that? Because disk operations are expensive. RAM is much faster in accessing and retrieving data than a hard disk, right? So Webpack, what it does is it stores whatever it's generating in the RAM for faster access, modification, and all that stuff. And uh, obviously, when you're building the project, Webpack does write it to the disk because, well, what is the use of that anyway? However, if you want to like see what Webpack Dev Server is doing behind the scenes, what you could do is by, pass an option called write to disk and make it true here to force Webpack to write whatever it's creating, whatever assets it's creating to the disk. This would be more, um, you could say, valuable to us to see the changes when we are using some sort of hash or something. So for example, if I have like main dot, you know, hash dot js, something like this. So now if I go ahead and run npm run dev, what we're gonna see is we get this main dot something file dot js. And if I, this won't, I guess, get us the same file because you know, once you change the contents of the file, the hash right there changes. So you see that now we would be actually filled up with a lot of garbage because Webpack Dev Server is on the fly compiling it and changing it and writing it to the disk as well. But we can omit this all by just, you know, removing that option or maybe like setting it to false, whatever you like. By default, it's set to false. So yeah, in most of the cases, you do not really need to write to disk, but there would be some cases where you want to, where you want to see if Webpack Dev Server is correctly working or not. So there's that option, right? So you can just fire off the build folder and uh, run the dev again, which is going to fire off our Webpack Dev Server. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. And uh, we're gonna surely see how we can include files like this inside our index.html because, you know, I cannot really give hash.js right here, right? So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna see that later on as we proceed. So that's all for this one. I'll see you then in the next video.